Hi everyone, it's Rio CloudSync. In today's session, we'll be focusing on Microsoft Entry ID custom security attributes in conjunction with conditional access. So first things first, you as administrator, a global administrator, will need to access the Microsoft Entra admin console. If you can navigate to entra.microsoft.com, it will bring you to this high level dashboard of which you can manage identity, protection, identity governance, and variable credentials. This is your identity access management solution. In today's session, we'll be covering off custom attributes. So on the left hand side, if we hover over identity, event protection, and we scroll down to custom security attributes, there will be a need to grant specific roles to be able to create and access custom attributes. I'll cover that shortly. Let's first understand what custom security attributes are. Well, they're business specific attributes you as an administrator can assign to enter ID objects, for example, users, applications, service principles, and so forth. You can also use the custom security attributes alongside or in conjunction with conditional access to restrict access to particular target resources based on the attribute you set or assign to the, the particular user identity. Why would you as, a, as an administrator want to use custom security attributes? Why would you not just use the, the standardized properties which uh, are associated with user accounts or identities within the organization itself? Well, first things first, you'll, you'll be able to categorize users based on maybe their, their hourly pay, maybe their department, uh, a bit more granularity in terms of that as we can, uh, we can select free data types. Um, extend user profiles just generally across the board um, and, and, and maybe only a short admins can, can see these particular properties. The, 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 there's, a, there's a few justifications of why you would use custom attributes over the standardized uh, properties which you, you find in the user profiles. So let's go ahead and try and create a custom attribute and then with that I will uh, pr provide you an, an oversight in terms of any limitations why we're creating what we're creating and how we manage this moving forward. So if we, if like I said, if we access the custom attribute pane down the left hand side, and if, if you haven't, if you don't have the applicable role to be able to view, assign and uh, designate attribute sets to users, then, then you will need to append the role to your account. You as a global administrator can assign that to yourself. So first things first, if we go to identity and we go to roles and admins, we can select all roles, and if you scroll down, you'll see there is attribute uh, definition reader, attribute definition administrator, attribute assignment reader, and attribute assignment administrator. So we need uh, two or four of these roles. Um, so we assign attribute assignment administrator and attribute definition administrator. The assignment administrator, as per the name, will allow us once we've created the um, the uh, custom attribute sets to assign that to a particular user, and the definition administrator will allow us to create the uh, the, the attribute set itself. Um, as I was previously testing this prior to this, um, this this screen share, I've already assigned this to my particular user account, of which I'll show you. So if we select users, all users type in Rio, select Rio, assign roles. You'll see I'm a global admin and I also have the two applicable roles I've just specified. The state is active and you can see I've got a start time and end, ti end time because I'm using the likes of privilege identity management alongside my uh, uh, enter ID directory roles. So once again, if I go back to the left hand side and select protection, and I select custom security attributes. You can see I've already created an initial attribute set. I've named it BU for business unit. Uh, you can see there's a number uh, of maximum number of attributes I've set is 25. The maximum in terms of um, what you can create is 500 per org. If you see, if I select edit attribute set, I, I'd, I'd usually set, set the name alongside the description. Maybe I just wanna, I, I want to specify business unit in the description. And like I said, the maximum number of uh, attribute sets is 500. I always set this to 25. This is standard out of the box. If I select save, you'll see the descriptions added and we're ready to go. May also make you aware you do require Microsoft Entra ID P1, formerly known as um, Azure AD Premium P1 license uh, assigned to your account. And anyone who is um, utilizing the, um, the, the, 
the use of attribute sets within the organization. And once again, the, the roles need to be uh, there to, to be able to utilize the service. If we set the attribute set name, it'll bring us to the pane of where we can administer the, the attributes that themselves um, assign multi-value or predefined um, attributes uh, to, to the attribute set itself. Um, and I can also segment the role base access control for the attributes. As you would have seen, I assigned the, um, the, the, the role base access control role for Azure AD um, on the directory level. In this instance, we may want to segment it per attribute set Therefore, we can access the attribute set itself, um, highlighted BU for business unit. We can go to roles and administrators and you can see it already defines the four roles for you. With that, say for example, I wanted an attribute assignment administrator, maybe I don't want someone defining it um, other than my account, I want someone to be able to assign it to, to a particular user in the organization. But now I'll select attribute assignment administrator and I would add assignment here, and that would define it to this scope and this scope only. As you can see, the direct uh, the scope for this uh, user account, which is my user account, is directory. Therefore, I can manage all the attribute sets in my organization. If I was to assign it to someone else, for example, uh, I could just do engine user add. You can see this, this scope now is for this resource and this resource only. So if I was to sign into engine user at uh, wcctechnicalpresales.microsoft.com, they would only be able to um, uh, assign this attribute set from the uh, directory itself. If we go back to the active, attri um, active attributes tab, you can see we can now add an attribute. And we may want to call this, um, because we're in the business department uh, OU per se, we may want to call this uh, department... Of course, there's a property within the directory itself called department. So why would you do this? This is just an example of how you could segment this. You could do this, um, I don't know, hourly rates. You could do this national insurance number, passport. Okay, this is just for simplicity. Uh, data type, we've got three data types. We've got Boolean, Antigua, and String. String's normally used for words, Antigua's numbers, and Boolean's yes or no, for example. We'll select String in this case. Do we want to allow multiple values to be assigned to this attribute set itself? Um, no, um, only allow predefined values to be assigned. We're going to set that to yes. We want to be able to define these values. I don't want um, the, 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 the end users themselves to be able to define the values or anyone else other than the administrator here. And what we can do, we can add a value. I can set a value to, I don't know, technology, for example. And we're going to set this to active as well. I'm going to add another value. I'm going to set this to uh, service desk. I'm going to set this to active as well. And what we've done here, we've created an attribute set. Within the attribute set, we've created an attribute. And within here, we've uh, we've created the predefined values based off the properties here. Okay. With that, we're going to select save. And you can see it succeeded. You can see we've got the attribute name of department underneath the attribute set. Um, the data type is string. Uh, therefore, we can use uh, words in essence, and we've got two predefined values. Uh, with that, if we go back one stage, you can see the overall uh, override and attribute set name. Okay, and now how do we start to utilize these custom attributes? Well, first things first, we can use them in the sign-in logs. So if we go to identity, all users, uh, sorry, not the sign-in logs, um, the all users uh, pill filter pane, and we add filter. I'm going to custom security attributes, and you can see here it's already filtered by the one attribute set we've got, which is business unit. I did create one earlier, please ignore that. You can disable these, that's no problem. And we want to set department, and we want to operator equals either one of the two departments. First things first, though, you would um, you, you would need to assign uh, this attribute um, set to a user. So if I was to go into uh, myself, for example, and select under manage custom security attributes. I'll be able to assign the attribute set to myself. Technology, and you save. And then if I give that a two seconds, give that a refresh, just to replicate over, and go back to custom security attributes, departments, equals operator, value, technology, apply, and you'll see it's defined myself there in terms of the filter, which is great. Um, leading back to our original um, statement, how do we use this in conjunction with conditional access? Well, 
we can go back to the protection pane and we can have a get to conditional access. Like I said, you do require a premium P1 license for this functionality even to appear within the conditional access policies. And set policies. And if we select new policy, we'd set up the conditional access policy as per you would uh, in terms of business requirements and what you're trying to achieve. Maybe you're trying to restrict access to Microsoft 365 services. Maybe you're utilizing the likes of um, um, Secure Service Edge, for example, uh, through global secure access. Um, same principle applies. We just select target resources and select apps. And you'll see here there's an option for edit filter. If we set edit filter, we now have an option to configure our customer security attributes. And what we'll do here, we'll just add attributes, department, operator equals technology. And what we've just done there is just define our own properties. And then with that, we can utilize conditional access and the, the, the functionality within conditional access to either restrict or allow access or require the use of multi-factor authentication. Um, I have covered this in previous videos, um, so I'm not going to go into depth with conditional access. Uh, but if you understand the uh, overriding picture of conditional access, you can see how this fits in very uh, nicely. Other than that, there is a Microsoft doc, which does refer to, to the broader limitations of custom security attributes. Um, I will try to reference that in the description. Um, if there's any other questions, just uh, please do let me know. Thank you very much.